Alright, hey guys, so we're going to be doing um, just five minutes of foam rolling today. So if you have a foam roller at home, I'm going to go through just ways that you can do a little foam roller workout. Um, it's not going to be anything intense at all, just finding um, the right placement for different muscle groups when you're foam rolling. Alright, so starting. So I always like to start seated on the foam roller, okay? So first thing you're going to do is just start to roll back and forth over your, pretty much your glutes, okay? And then from here, you can come to one side, extend out one leg, and then start to get more of the outer hip. And the goal is to not go fast, you're just thinking going up and down, nice and slow. Good, and then turn over to the other side. So then now we're going to take it onto your back. So start to roll forward. Think about hugging. So come under with your spine, belly button, the spine start to roll down. And then once you get past your low back, you can start to release a little bit more. And then usually you should feel that release, whether it's with like cracks or as you move through. So as you come up, you can think almost like a crunch, like inhale up, and then release on the way down. Crunch up, and then release down. Hands can come behind your head to hit your upper back a little bit differently. And always deep breathing the whole time. So however long to take you or you'd like to take for your back, it's really nice just to move up and down your spine. And then if you get to a spot, so I like to do this for upper back mobility and flexibility before doing um, a class or a workout. So never on your low back, just on your upper, so thoracic into like in between the shoulder blades area. You'll stop at one spot. Take the arms, inhale, reach all the way back. And basically just hold that for about 10 breaths. Walk your feet to the 
the other side, same thing. And if you feel a sticky spot, just kind of hold over, do a little movement, maybe find where it is, and then hold it there, and then roll it out. Now I can stay on this side, turning over to the side. So start with your foam roller essentially like right underneath your armpit. And then you start to come up and down your side. I like to think palm facing the side or even a little bit up. And then if you once again find a spot that's kind of sticky, you're going to stay on it and this time rotate a little bit back and then a little bit forward with your chest, right? Because you're on the side. So now you can go this way or that way. You can get a little bit lower, do the same thing. Okay, and then you would switch sides. to either one forearm or both forearms. So now you're on that outer thigh. This one's usually pretty intense. And so for this one, what you can do is if you feel you know a spot that's pretty tender, hold it there and then flex the foot in towards, so hamstring curl, and then extend it back out. So it's basically like as if you have like a lacrosse ball or you're massaging through that spot. Because as you flex and extend the leg, it rolls through that muscle. And you can also just do the forward and back thing. So rock your hips slightly forward and then back. Good. And then come to the other side. into the inner 
inner thigh. You first would take the foam roller now lengthwise. And so you want to, so if we're going to go, let's say right leg, the foam roller is going to be slightly to the right of your inner thigh. The knee is out on, in a 90, so 90 degree angle from the hip. And then you literally just roll side and back. So out, it kind of rolls through to the inner groin area and then back. Other side, so just come up and over. Lots of rolling around on the floor with this, but once you get into the routine of doing it, you can go through it um, pretty quickly. However, it's nice to take your time to find those areas. So inner thigh. And use pressure, right? So try not to just kind of go back and forth and thinking that the weight, like your body weight is just gonna do it. Like actually add some pressure so that you can start to gauge like what you need with it. Cause this is just a prop, right? You have to still do and make the effort. Okay. So we did inner, outer quads. If you have tight calves, you can absolutely do calves. Same as the quads, just kind of roll back and forth. And then if you need more pressure, which I usually do because I don't usually feel it like this, you cross one leg over, roll up and down, and then you cross the other leg over and roll up and down. So calves are pretty straightforward and they're a little bit harder just because you have to support your body weight, right? And then move forward and back. So that part's actually a good workout. All right, so now I'm gonna go into something that's a little bit more specific to a longer roller. So if you don't have that, that's okay. Uh, but you can still benefit by this. So you put your roller towards your sacrum and then lay back and then maybe adjust from there. So now it's lengthwise and you just roll back and forth like this. So this is a good stabilization exercise because it, it makes you really control through your center going back and forth. And then that one's also going to target like shoulder blades and like upper back as well. Okay, and then the last one, I'm just gonna go through how you could possibly do um, triceps and top of shoulder. So you have to get pretty close to the floor. I think the whole concept is trying to lay yourself pretty like close down. You're gonna rotate your palm up so that you're gonna get the back side of your arm. So from the top of your shoulder to your tricep and just basically roll like that. So I like to have one knee bent on the inside to stabilize and then just move forward and back. You can so think like chest is down a little bit more and then roll your chest up a little bit more. Okay, so I'll show it from this angle, the opposite side. before you're gonna do a workout. Especially if you know, for example, like you worked out legs the day before, so your quads are just like really, really like solid and you just need to kind of break it up. So 
So that's what I really think um, tone rolling is good for, using it as a tool like that. And then also, it's always good to do your upper back and just do those breathing exercises just holding, right? Because if we're slumped forward or just even about to do a lot of exercise where we're like this, to start to open that up before your exercise is going to be more helpful to find that mobility as you're going through. So I hope you guys like that. Let me know if you have any questions about more foam rolling stuff. And yeah, I think that's everything that I want to cover. Okay, I'll see you guys.